It's now been a few months since the release of the documentary Closing Loops, and in that time, one of my biggest mysteries has been resolved, in part due to the releasing of the film itself. A few months ago, I still couldn't trace my direct male ancestors further back than my grandfather, Albert Garside, born with the name Albert Good. I had taken a Y-DNA test, which connected me to the goods of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but that was all I'd found. In my search for Albert's father, Edward George Good, I had few clues to work with other than his marriage to my great-grandmother and his name and age on my grandfather's birth certificate, so I could estimate his date of birth. Spending days going through records on Ancestry.com, I had created a suspect list of people who could potentially have been my great-grandfather. Using conflicts in the information available, I was able to narrow down this list quite a bit. There was one amazingly close match, with a George Edward Good living in Pittsburgh. His kids even had the same names. And again, thanks to Ancestry, I was able to get in touch with one of his descendants and compare DNA. But it was another dead end. There was no match. The Edward George Good in Chicago seemed unlikely. The year of birth didn't match, and he was still married to a woman named Christina years after he left my grandfather's family. How could that be? The odds seemed against it. The last Edward G. Good I couldn't find any more information on, so I was once again stuck. I released Closing Loops in August, and shortly after was contacted by my aunt, who had been out of touch with us for decades now. Not only had she heard about my film, but she had always taken a keen interest in our family genealogy. It turns out that she has the only surviving picture of our mystery man, Edward George Good, so now I can finally see who I'm looking for and can fill in his image. My aunt also had a photo of my grandfather as a mascot for the Never Sink Fire Company. The photo was featured in the local newspaper. The article mentions his father is Edward Good, as we already knew, but adds that his grandfather was an H. N. Good. I had seen that name before in my searching. My aunt also had Edward's birthday as September 18th. That was the final piece of the puzzle. I finally had everything I needed to solve this mystery. Going back to my suspect list, the solution was clear. This was the man. His father, H.N. Good, was Henry Newton Good of Reading, Pennsylvania, who worked for the railroad for 46 years and volunteered at the Neversink Fire Company. In his obituary, it mentions his son, Edward G., who was living in Chicago at the time. Henry's father was Jacob Good from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, who also worked for the railroad for 37 years. So there it was. I had found my connection to the Good family of Lancaster. This loop was closed. So who was my great-grandfather? What made him abandon our family in Pennsylvania and move to Chicago? His World War I registration card shows when he was 34 years old, he was married to a Christine Good, and they were living in Cook County, Illinois. Like his father and grandfather before him, he was working for the railroad. 24 years later, his World War II registration card says he's still married to Christine in Chicago, now 58 years old, and it shows his place of birth as Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He would later die in Chicago, 65 years old, after a hard life and what I later learned was a problem with alcohol. In 1917, Edward and Christine had a son, Howard Edward, who was my grandfather's half-brother. Howard, like his father Edward, seemed to prefer women and alcohol over family life. While well, he had a wife and son in Chicago, after serving in the Marines in World War II, he abandoned his family in Chicago. Howard met a new woman and decided to settle in Hermosa Beach, California, 
only a few miles from where I've lived for the last 30 years. How strange life is that by finding the identity of my great-grandfather, I discover my grandfather's half-brother had walked in the same streets as I have 70 years before me. There's another twist to the story that starts with one of my DNA matches, a woman named Java who never knew the identity of her father. She was my second highest match next to my known cousins and family, but we had no idea how we were related. Having so intensely researched my family history, I felt that I should be able to help her narrow down her search. I first tried to match her against my aunt, who I shared DNA with on every chromosome, but they didn't match at all, so we're not related on my mother's side. Since Java was born in Chicago, I then wondered if she was related to the Good family. That seemed to be a good place to look. I contacted the relatives of Elvin Good, my Y DNA match, and found out that he had also taken an autosomal DNA test, which I could then compare to Java, and they matched. In fact, she matched him closer than I did. She was definitely related to the Good family. Well, Howard Good and Vivian had a daughter in Hermosa Beach, and through a photo posted of Vivian's gravestone on Find a Grave, I was able to get in contact with her. She agreed to take a DNA test. A few weeks later, I got an email from her. She matched both Java and me. She was my second cousin and Java's aunt. All the arrows now pointed toward Howard's son, who we abandoned in Chicago, Howard Francis, the grandson of Edward George Good. Howard Francis's grandmother, who was married to Edward George in Chicago, eventually moved in with him and his wife Judy and lived to the age of 89. While Howard Francis also died young from his life of excess, he left behind his wife Judy and two sons. Java contacted Judy and paid her a visit. There was no doubt about it. Judy's deceased husband was Java's father. Judy called her son to let them know they had a half-sister they had never met. Since then, DNA has confirmed their relationship. Howard Francis had an affair with Java's mother, and she had gotten pregnant, but she never told him about it. There is also a photo that Judy shared of Howard Francis with one of his sons that's eerily similar to one of me with my son years ago that makes me wonder how much DNA plays a role in who we are and who we become in life. Happily, it seems that the current generation of good men have managed to overcome the demons that haunted the previous three generations, and hopefully the cycle of addiction and abandonment has been broken for good.